all cults have something to offer. They have something good to give. Otherwise, no one would go in the first place. How does a group of like-minded people rallying around a shared interest become a cult? Another definition for a cult is high demand or high control group, and that kind of says it all. There's a lot, a lot of control, a high level of coercion and manipulation of groupthink, and a certain ideology or a common cause that binds people together and that they can get quite fanatical about. It's an us versus them thinking. The digital age has changed the way cults look, how they're formed and how they recruit. Digitalization and algorithms have played a massive role in how cults are spreading. And it's not just the woo-woo that can open the door to cults or cultic groups. It can be your coaching program around money and success. It can be your kundalini yoga class. It could be um, CrossFit. It could be an MLM that, where you're selling essential oils, crypto cults, a vegan cult, a pole dancing cult, which, I, which I've just heard about. All these offerings, workshops, coachings, all this gets spread online. And the more our devices learn about us and give us what we want, the more we could be targeted by cult-like groups looking for new members to monetize and exploit. We're actually now seeing online cults like um, Starseeds, like QAnon. Where QAnon repackages New World Order paranoia for modern audiences, Starseeds go further, a lot further, like Interstellar. You are just a foreigner visiting, passing through to fulfill a purpose and a mission. Starseeds are convinced they're half alien, a superior form of human put on Earth to change the world. I did not realize just how much patience and trust I was going to need here on this planet, am I right? You could pay a starseed to cure your depression, relationships and acne and learn how everyone else is out to get you. There's a big overlap between conspiracy theories, anti-vax movements and cultic movements. The deep state or the cabal or that the us versus them thinking that the government, the state, the doctors are out to get us and we can't trust them. Anka says we need more support for those vulnerable to extreme beliefs and ideologies. Unfortunately, in New Zealand, we don't have an organisation as such that tracks cults. It's desperately needed, just like we have it with drug counselling and sexual abuse counselling. People have concerns and they don't really know who to go to. So, whether it's crystals, crypto or CrossFit, how do we know when to say when on the Kool-Aid? What to look out for is really the groupthink. If you get a feeling straight away that you can't say what you think and that people, you're going to be outside of the group and people are not going to like you as much if, you, if something doesn't feel right for you and you say that, that's a big warning sign. Well, lots of people watching will have a friend or a family member who's got sucked into one of these things. Actually talking to them, it's important to talk to them, but you've kind of got to do it the right way. It's a bit like talking to someone who believes conspiracy theory. You've got to go gently, gently, so you don't push them away further. There's a Facebook page called, get this, Culty Conversations <laughs> NZ, uh, and that's a good place to start if you're wondering how to have one of those conversations. Uh, and if you're wondering, I can confirm that no, Jesse is not in a cult. He does just have many, many children. It just kind of looks like they've got a... <laughs> They've just got a thing about them, but they're fine. You would love to join our cult, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's open to everybody.